Hey, hey, hi, hey, our review family, keep it, I keep it tight. My name is Jay Morse, the review guy, and I'm back again to bring you another video. Welcome back to my series, Albums I Liked. This is my general catch-up series, talking about the records from the previous month that I enjoyed the most. They usually come from a wide range of genres. I also do some honorable mentions. I post all of the album reviews in the description box below, so you can go hear my in-depth thoughts. Because obviously, I can't go in as much detail as I would like in this video as I did in those videos, and I can't do them that much justice. So I have have a few records to shout out, the first of which is the debut Night Crowned album, Impious VM or Impious VM. This is a really great symphonic black metal record in the vein of, say, Emperor's record in the Nightside Eclipse. A little bit better production, has some of the campiness and some of the theatrics of what you would get from a ghost album. Very over the top at a lot of times, I really rolled around the idea of giving this album a formal review, and the only reason I didn't is I feel like there wasn't too much to say about it. At face value, it is is what it is, but still a really thrilling record from the band for a debut and has me really excited to see what they do in the future. Next up is I want to give a shout out to the BTS record Map of the Soul 7. I got a lot of backlash for this review. I feel like it's because I didn't praise the record as much as I necessarily could have and people didn't really agree with my comments about the K-pop industry and the toxic idolatry that is given to a lot of the people that find themselves in these bands that find themselves being grifted from these talent agencies. But otherwise, I do think it is a great compilation. I like that they included the things from Map of the Soul Persona, even though it maybe didn't seem like I did in that review. I think a lot of the tracks are good, and even though I do like a lot of the solo songs, I think they could have been done a little bit better instrumentally, and I think people took that as me dissing the band members that were on the tracks. I think that maybe was taken as they shouldn't have belonged on the album in the first place, which couldn't be further from the truth. And even the big, big singles like On and Black Swan aren't my favorite. Favorites. And even though the record serves more as a compilation than anything, I still really enjoy the record as a whole. Okay, now that the honorable mentions are out of the way, let's get to the main meat of the video. There are quite a few records that I enjoyed last month, starting with the Sepultura record, Quadra. Not only is this my favorite record post the Cavalera era, I think this is the best Sepultura record that has dropped in a while. It's been a while since Sepultura has really wowed me, but this is the best groove metal record that I have heard in a while. It's full to the brim with catchy, stone-cold riffage and the typical fuck you veneer that not only Sepultura has, but pioneers of the genre like Pantera had. And I just hope that the tenacity and the aggression that this record shows is carried over into the 2020s and Sepultura really keeps up this streak. Next up is the Loathe record, I Let It In and It Took Everything. Fans of the Dillinger Escape Plan or that car bomb record last year that released Mordial, which I enjoyed a lot, don't miss out on this. They build on everything that they did on the Cold Sun with their new metal infused sound incorporating heavy down-tuned gent riffage as well as general mathcore fuzziness, weird time signatures, weird distortion put on the effects. The filters sound amazing. And overall, it's just a super exciting and fresh sounding metalcore and mathcore record with a heavy production that recalls a lot of the reasons that I did enjoy that car bomb record. Gotta give a shout out to the new Ozzy Osbourne record, Ordinary Man. Some people didn't agree with me. Some people didn't like how emotional I got in that review. They disagreed with the fact that I feel like Ozzy could die eventually. If for whatever reason, people think the man's an immortal. Sure, he has a treatable form of Parkinson's, but it's still so sad to see him falling from grace. It just breaks my heart to see his physical body just somewhat giving out over time. It's an introspective record, and I know some people didn't enjoy the way the vocals were mixed or the production. It's classic Aussie production, and the lyricism continues to tug at my heartstrings. I think that barring some of the more stereotypical devilish tracks that he incorporates, even if the instrumentation isn't necessarily the most groundbreaking from Aussie's standards, I think it's a beautifully constructed record, and tracks like the self-titled track just continue to get in my mind, and they just won't leave. There are so many quotable lyrics on this record that just stick in my mind, like, don't forget me as the colors fade. When the lights go down, it's just an empty stage. I mean, when he's singing on this record about, like, just remember it's all for you, it just, it just gets to me so hard, and I don't know what else I can really say for this record. I really just love this record. It's one of my favorites of the year. Shout out to the new Beneath the Mask record, Fearmonger, the band's glorious return after a major gap in studio-length albums. I like that they didn't have to stack on 
on a ton of tracks or a ton of length. They really don't overstay their welcome. They get in, they get out with a focused batch of extremely juicy technical deathcore and death metal rockers. The rage on this record is great. I love the Rings of Saturn, uh, Infinite Annihilator, over the top, almost slam type veneer and some of these futuristic tapping riffs. But it doesn't go so over the top that they feel like they're not taking themselves seriously. No, it just seems like a band full of finesse. In this record, I deemed my album of the year so far, and for the most part, I stand by that. Drown's record, Subaqueous. The only funeral doom metal record that has rivaled Bellwitch's record, Mirror Reaper, for me. I don't want to spoil too much about this record, but if you enjoy atmosphere and if you enjoy add-ins, if you enjoy how constructions of tracks are made from this doom metal perspective, specifically the just overly sorrowful, rolling, long tail, patient funeral doom metal bands, you'll love this record. It's the first funeral doom metal record in a while that I have been blown away by, intoxicated by, and before even doing my review, listened to it over and over and over and over, and I still have been listening to it over and over and over and over. Like I said, I don't want to spoil too much because this is just such a great record. But otherwise, I'm going to link all of the reviews in the description box below so you can go hear my in-depth analysis of these records. It goes without saying, but I love all of these. I recommend all of them from top to bottom. Be sure to stay for the end screen if you enjoyed this video. I'll link some videos that you might be interested in. Like the video because it does help out a ton. Subscribe to join the review family today and smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. You know who it is. My name is Jay Morris, the guy, and I'm signing off saying fair. Well, maybe we could both